So last lecture of the semester for new stuff that is and we're going to solve some trigonometric equations. So in order to lay the base for that what I'd like to do first is to solve an old algebraic equation and this is a quadratic. So if I was going to solve this quadratic I'd factor first so I'd say 2x here x here 1 and 1 adding both setting it equal to 0 we know that if we have two terms multiplied together equal to 0 then one of those two terms has to equal 0 and if that's the case we have two solutions x equaling negative 1 and x equaling negative 1 half all right the basic premise of this problem is to get it into a product of two terms, set them both equal to zero, and solve. We're going to do this a lot today, but we're going to do it with trigonometric equations, so we may have to use identities along the way. So here's our first problem. We're going to solve where x is between zero and two pi, so there's only going to be a few solutions at max. And again, we have a quadratic. We're going to factor this. So we have cosine of x in our first term, cosine of x in our second term, that guarantees us cosine squared. It multiplies to 4, adds to 3, that's a 4 and a 1. I need a negative on the 4, a positive on the 1. Set that equal to 0. We have the cosine of x plus 1 equals 0, and the cosine of x minus 4 is equal to 0. We need to know where the cosine of x is equal to negative 1 and where the cosine of x is equal to 4. Well, the cosine of x is equal to, and all these should be unit circle style problems. All right. So where is the cosine of x equal to negative 1? That's where is x equal to negative 1? That's over here or at pi. Where is the cosine of x equal to 4? It's never going to happen. Cosine always goes, if you remember, between 1 and negative 1. So this has a no solution part to it. That's called an extraneous answer. All right. Sorry, answer in this case is just pi. Moving forward. So in this case, you'll notice that I have something on either side of the equation and we really don't want that we want one side equaling zero so we can go ahead and factor so let's do that I have the sine of x times the tangent of x minus 3 sine of x would equal zero notice I have a common term of sine of x I'm going to factor that out I'm left with tan of x minus 3 is equal to 0. So we have where is the sine of x equal to 0 and where is the tan of x equal to 3. Let's take a look at the unit circle to start with. Sine of x is equal to 0. We know that happens at 0 and pi. Now where is the tangent of x equal to 3? I have no idea, honestly. But I do know that the tangent's going to equal 3 because we know our tangent graph looks something like this. And there is a y value of 3 there. So we're going to have to actually use a calculator now. We're going to have to take the inverse of this and say x equals the inverse tangent of 3. And we'll pop that into our calculator. And doing that, we get roughly, let's say, 71.6 degrees. Now, we also know that if the tangent is 71.6, we know that there's somewhere else where I have a similar y over x ratio. And that's going to be down here at a reference angle of 71.6 degrees. So this is not only 71.6, but it's 71.6 plus really 180. So that's at, what, 2, 
51.6 degrees. And I don't know what that is in radians, but we could convert those if we really needed to. All right. And I probably should have put this between 0 and 360, but I didn't. Moving forward. Again, we have a side equal to 0, which is great. So we can now say, well, we can do this a couple of different ways. We notice this factors. All right. I typically like to get everything in one term if I possibly can. So what I'm going to choose to do is instead of factoring into sine plus cosine and sine minus cosine, I'm going to say that sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared of x minus cosine squared of x is equal to 0. So I have 1 minus 2 cosine squared of x equals 0. Notice I have negative 1 over negative 2 will equal cosine squared of x. So the cosine of x would equal plus or minus the square root of 1 half, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Well, that's a good thing because that's a unit circle problem. So if I go to my unit circle and say, where do I get root 2 over 2, positive or negative, for cosine, I know it's at all my 45 guys, right? So I have pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So there's actually four answers for this problem. Notice again, we have a side that's not equal to zero, so I'm going to do that first. Let's do it a little neater. 2 tan squared of x. I'm going to put my minus secant of x second plus 1 is equal to zero. Again, I said I would prefer to get everything in terms of one function. And I have a tangent squared and a secant here. So I'm going to take and know that tangent squared has a Pythagorean identity with it. So 1 plus tan squared is secant squared. Therefore, tangent squared is equal to secant squared of x minus 1 minus secant of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Distribute through, we get 2 secant squared of x minus 2 minus secant of x plus 1 is equal to 0. This goes to 2 secant squared of x minus secant of x minus 1 equals 0. This looks like I should be able to do a factoring on this. 2 secant of x secant of x. I need a 1 and a 1. This is negative, this is positive, so I need to know where the secant of x is equal to negative one-half, and where the secant of x is equal to one. Now this may not be identifiable for you, so what I'm going to do is change the secant to one over cosine of x is equal to negative one-half, and one over cosine of x is equal to one. So now what I'm going to do is take the reciprocal of each side. So the cosine of x will equal to negative two, and where will the cosine of x equal to one? Cosine of x equals negative two, that's an extraneous answer, it doesn't happen. Where does the x value equal 1. Well, that's at 2 pi. In theory, we could put 0. So let's just do it. All right. And there's my answer.
Here's another situation, side not equal to zero, and I have two different functions. So I'm going to change cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. And I have 3 sine of x minus 1. I'm going to bring the 1 minus sine squared over to the other side. So set the left side equal to 0. Gives me sine squared of x plus 3 sine of x. Negative 1 and negative 1 make negative 2. Now, you'll notice in this case that while this seems to be a factorable problem, it's not. Because there's nothing that multiplies the negative 2 and adds to 3. So what we really have to do is we have to go to the quadratic formula, all right, which says the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared, so that's 9, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And that's going to be equal to the sine of x. So now let's grind through this a little bit. We get negative 3 plus or minus. That's 9 plus 8. That's root 17 over 2. So we're going to have to go to our calculator right now. We have sine of x. And let's not do this in radians anymore. Let's go ahead and do this in degrees just for fun. Um, and let's plug the quantity of negative 3 plus or minus root 17 over 2 into our calculator. When I use the positive, I get 0.56-ish. Right? And then when I use the negative, I will get roughly negative 3.56. So what I have now is I have the sine of x equals 0.56 or the sine of x equals negative 3.56. Well, five, six. This is going to be extraneous because we know the sign can't be greater than 1. So now we go inverse on our calculator. x equals the inverse sign of 0.56. That's going to get me one value as we know on our calculator. All right, and that value is going to be, let's just go with roughly 34 degrees. Now, looking at where 34 degrees is, I know I have another value where the sine is equal to, or the y value is equal to the same y value as 34 degrees. And that's going to actually happen, whoops, 34 degrees, that's going to actually happen over in the second quadrant at a reference angle of 34 degrees. And I know that reference angle of 34 is 34 back from 180. So that's at 146 degrees. So there's my two solutions. So when you can't factor, go to the quadratic and then use the inverse sine, cosine, or tangent button to get yourself done. All right, so now we've got a double angle introduced. And we've got this tangent introduced. So I know since my double angle is going to be 2 sine of cosine, then I'm probably going to want to change my tangent to sines and cosines. So this is 4 sine of x over cosine of x. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine of x. So this gets me 4 sine of x plus 2 sine of x cosine squared of x is equal to 0. Now, probably the best thing to do is notice I have common terms. And I go ahead and factor. So I'm going to pull out a 2 sine of x and be left with 2 
plus cosine squared of x is equal to 0. Therefore, 2 sine of x equals 0. And 2 plus cosine squared of x is equal to 0. So again, we have the sine of x equaling 0. And cosine squared of x equaling negative 2. Well, never will a squared term equal a negative number, so this is extraneous. And we want to know where the y value is equal to 0. There's our circle. And where's the y value equal to 0? At 0 degrees. And pi and 2 pi. But since our initial problem stated we're doing this between 0 and 2 pi and neither can be included, we get rid of the 2 pi and the 0, and our answer is only pi. Again, we have a problem where we don't have a side equal to 0, so I'm going to set a side equal to 0. I also know that I have a sine here and a cosine of 2x here, so I'm going to use the identity that has only sine in it. So that's 1 minus 2 sine squared. Add it to sine, and I'll bring the 1 over now and set it equal to 0. So you'll notice I have 1 minus 1, which equals 0. I now have the sine of x minus 2 sine squared of x left. I have a common term of sine of x that I'll factor out, leaving me with 1 minus 2 sine of x. I'll now set each equal to 0, so sine of x equals 0. 1 minus 2 sine of x equals 0. Therefore, a half is equal to the sine of x. And I have to solve both of these now. I can state where the sine of x equals 0 between 0 and 2 pi. And that's going to be a pi. Again, because I didn't include that in my initial answer, sometimes they will include it. And where is the sine of x equal to a half? Well, that's somewhere in the first and second quadrant. We know that to be at pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. So there's three answers in this case. Here are your questions for today. You'll have to do something a little bit different in each of these, and put them on the form, and we'll see you tomorrow.